Hi, this is Tony Sagami. Hey, let's talk about beer this week. You know, the beer company I want to talk to you about is Carlsberg. You know, that's the largest brewer in the world, and it's a Danish beer giant with over 300 different types of beers. Now, what does Carlsberg have to do with Asia? Listen, and I'll tell you. Now, first of all, Carlsberg just reported its quarterly operating results, and they fell short of expectations. Uh, part of the problem was that sales in Eastern Europe, where Carlsberg gets 44% of its revenues, fell by 9% in the last quarter on a year-over-year -year basis. Now, one of the lone pieces of good news in Carlsberg's report is that sales in Asia increased by 14%. Unfortunately, Carlsberg only gets about 13% of its sales from Asia. Now, the main reason that Carlsberg didn't hit its sales target wasn't that weak sales in Eastern Europe. The price of its raw materials, especially barley, which has increased by 50% since May, uh, have jumped so much that they've killed their profits. Here's a quote from it. it says, the impact from increased input costs will be higher. Currently, operating profit impacted in 2011. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, there's two points uh, that I think we can take from that Carlsberg results and expand it out uh, to other issues. Number one, business is still booming in Asia. 14% year-over-year growth is pretty darn good. Number two, Higher commodity prices are killing profits. Now, they're not killing profits just at Carlsberg. Those higher commodity prices are going to kill profits all over the place. Now, people all over the world, you know, are eating corn. I'll give me like an example with corn. People all over the wor world are eating more corn. Uh, that one of the problems is that people are eating corn faster than the farmers can grow it. There was a t statistic that came out that corn stockpiles have fallen to the lowest levels since 1974. Consider this stat. Since 2000, the production of wheat, grain, and corn uh, having increased by 16% per year annually. That's pretty good. However, demand has been growing by 20% annually, and that 4% difference is what's gobbling up all the stockpiles. You know, I usually either blame or credit uh, China for that increased demand, but the growing use of ethanol is one of the big reasons uh, for that. I think in a few years, when people start really complaining about higher food prices, they're going to point to uh, America's uh, insistence on the use of ethanol and the subsidies as one of the reasons for that higher prices. But nonetheless, you're going to hear a lot more about higher commodity prices going forward, and you're going to hear about a lot of other companies moaning about their profits being cut uh, because of those higher prices. Now, my Asia Stock Alert subscribers, we sold uh, their Qingdao uh, brewery stock a few weeks ago uh, for a big gain as well as about half our other portfolio and so we are well ahead of this inflation avalanche but it isn't too late to dump stocks that are going to be uh, affected by these higher commodity prices and see their profits crushed by that uh, companies that buy oil, wheat, corn, gold may all get all the headlines but think about sugar, cocoa, meat, milk, coffee, palm oil, soybeans, uh, potatoes, fruits, vegetables all of those companies are, are suffering from higher and higher input costs. Here are some examples of stocks that you might consider, uh, I think you should consider getting rid of. You know, the food processors like Heinz, Campbell's Soup, Kellogg's, Hershey's, Kraft, General Mills, Sara Lee. Uh, fast food stocks are going to suffer as their costs go up. McDonald's, Starbucks, Panera Bread, Yum Brands, and even restaurants uh, are going to have those type of trouble. P.F. Chang's, uh, Brinker International, Darden Restaurants, Dine Equity. You know, those are troublesome companies that you should really take a look at uh, and see how badly they're going to get hurt by higher food prices if you own them. Now, if you want to read my Wednesday, February 23rd column, you'll get a list of all the ET four, four ETFs that can profit uh, from, this, from the rising agricultural prices. Until next week, this is Tony Sagami signing off.